She'd wonder what he was up to. Was he missing her? He wasn't saying very much. So this is the first time that a cloud has actually appeared in the play space. It's impossible for you to actually interact with them because they, it flies away so quickly. But it's that kind of encroachment. It should hopefully feel that they're slowly but surely building up their interest and, and kind of like a like a wild animal kind of building up their, um, their tolerance of the characters and they're getting closer and closer and encroaching more and more on the game space. So, so hopefully that's kind, of, that's kind of building up a little bit. I want the tension to, to build up, I want the presence of those clouds to be more and more known as the game goes on, and, and obviously we're, we're starting to hit a point where the characters are starting to talk about that threat, and, 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 and that's coming to the fore a little bit. Thank <laughs> you. 
Chris and Laura um, falling in love was not actually part of the original, um, the kind of the structure I laid out online. I actually put up the um, the entire kind of narrative arc of the game online like a year ago, um, and I, I wasn't planning on putting those two um, together in a relationship. But as I worked on both their arcs and worked out kind of the journeys they were both going on, it became more and more clear that the relationship was kind of a perfect way of illustrating both characters' growth. Um, so Chris is realizing that other people aren't necessarily the worst thing in the world. So the idea of him forming a, a real relationship with someone is, is, is good for him for that purpose to kind of show that. Um, and with Laura, she's just learning to trust others, which, which again is something that hopefully a relationship kind of uh, symbolizes for her. So that was, um, it was kind of a late choice, but I think it kind of just gives both those characters a little bit more and lets the player see what's, what's changing with them, which is cool. to Laura as his girlfriend? Only if I say it out loud, he told himself. He didn't want to scare her off. This is one of the very first levels I made. Actually, this is um, this was something. It was experiential. This is something I, I, I've I've realised that a lot of the levels in Thomas, um, they weren't they weren't designed around a puzzle. They were designed around an activity that I thought would be quite fun to do. So here, for example, this is about kind of getting a sequence of bounces working and, and how that feels to the player, and and having those little constraints on what you can do. Um, it just I just it feels fun bouncing up just just managing to hit each of those buttons the height of the ceiling is kind of hopefully perfectly judged so that it just feels nice um and it's cool and I, I never really thought of it from a story perspective but i thought the design was cool what's really really cool um is as i start to watch more and more let's plays and i watch every let's play if you put a let's play of the game up i've watched it at some point at some point much to the annoyance of my girlfriend 
Um, and one thing that always that's happened in a few Let's Plays is people see a story in this moment. They see, um, because Chris is separated out and John and Laura are hanging out, they see that as a moment where Chris is jealous. Which is, which is really interesting, because it's, again, not something I thought of, much like the, the, the Claire Obesity issue. Um, that's, that sounds like a great movie. That could be a good thriller, the Claire Obesity issue. I, sorry, I'm going off topic. Um, <laughs> so it's nice that people kind of saw a, a relationship forming and they saw a meaning to the layout of the geometry in this level, which is, which is cool. And kind of, I, I, I think it means people were actually getting into the characters, which is, which is really cool. Really nice. So a lot like um, some of the other levels earlier on, this is um, a point where hopefully the player can kind of work out their own solutions to puzzles. Um, they've got kind of an environment that goes through a loop and they can kind of work out the way they want to, to approach it and there's lots of different ways of doing it. Um, the other big thing that's introduced here um, I think is the dotted lines, I think this is the first time you've seen them. Um, the dotted lines were, uh, were a problem that didn't really come up until this level, which was the idea of objects moving through um, barriers to the player. It's something that I hadn't really considered, um, and I'd not done earlier, and I didn't like the idea of them just moving through each other, because, I mean, that would work but uh, technically, but it wouldn't look right. It would look odd that, uh, that a wall went into another wall. So I wanted something that kind of made a bit more logical sense. Um, dotted line feels almost like a... I guess it's weird. It just it feels it makes more sense. It feels like a barrier, which is logical for the player, but it looks permeable. It looks like another thing could go through it quite nicely. Um, so I'm really happy with that solution. It kind of didn't make the it didn't break the minimalism. It kind of felt logical, um, and yeah, they, I use them quite a bit throughout the game uh, as the game goes on. It's a nice way of allowing me to move things in a way that doesn't necessarily feel logically real world. -y. Rude.
another revisit um, of an earlier level so this is this is the idea of water rising the difference here is there's way more characters um, and you get to choose the tempo and I like that it feels it feels like you're in more control but also what it really does is it mixes up that tempo so there are these kind of these slow moments where you're planning out how to hit the button and then these kind of panicked moments where you've got to get the character back otherwise they're gonna drown um, and I like that this level kind of of all the levels this is the one where there's an, a nice kind of variation in the way the player plays and the way they emotionally react to it so uh so yeah it's it's i like this level it's cool liked her new gang. She liked Chris. She liked having friends. These ones seem to be sticking around too. Not like those losers from before. Uh, this is another revisit um, of an earlier level. So this is this is the idea of water rising. The difference here is there's way more characters um, and you get to choose the tempo. And I like that. Uh, this is another revisit um, of an earlier level. So this is this is the idea of water rising. The difference here is there's way more characters um, and you get to choose the tempo. And I like that. It feels it feels like you're in more control, but also what it really does is it mixes up that tempo. So there are these kind of these slow moments where you're planning out how to hit the button, and then these kind of panicked moments where you've got to get the character back, otherwise they're gonna drown. Um, and I like that. This level kind of, uh, this is another revisit um, of an earlier level. So this is this is the idea of water rising. The difference here is there's way more characters, um, and you get to choose the tempo. And I like that. It feels it feels like you're in more control, but also what it really does is it mixes up that tempo. So there are these kind of these slow moments where you're planning out how to hit the button, and then these kind of panicked moments where you've got to get the character back, otherwise they're gonna drown. Um, and I like that. This level kind of of all the levels, this is the one where there's an, a nice kind of variation in the way the player plays and the way they emotionally react to it. So uh, so yeah, it's it's I like this level, it's cool.
This is the Panic Room, um, is what I think the file's called. Um, <laughs> it's not got a name in the game. Um, and the idea is here is that there's kind of these moving parts, and it seems much more scary than it is probably, um, and it's confined and small and just a single screen. Um, and it just feels like a really nice shift from the other levels. It feels dangerous. And hopefully the player then kind of realizes that they, they can get through it and they feel you know, ownership of the level, which is, which is the intention here. It's hopefully empowering. the fifth chapter of the game focuses on the characters kind of being removed one by one um the the important thing here was to make sure the game stayed fun didn't feel like a stretch we weren't adding any more characters for example um so this is where i kind of start to play a bit more with um the environmental stuff um and i start to try and think about some different combinations of the characters and, and situations to put them in the coloured switches, uh, this is the first time they're in the game, I believe. Uh, they are there, well, they're there for a lot of reasons. To be honest, they're partly there just for me to cover myself. They, they allow me to um, uh, lock off areas and, and make it so that one character can get somewhere but a second character can't. It's, it's cool from that respect um, because it makes puzzle, de <laughs> puzzle design a little bit easier. Um, and then there's hopefully a few places where that actually kind of serves the player and feels kind of nice and dramatic and more puzzling, essentially. It's a, it's a way of managing space to, to make some new puzzles. This is, much like everywhere else, wherever I did new mechanic, a, a, again, a safe place. Um, the colour buttons, you're going to work out by mistake even, because they're, they're all there, all the different colours are represented, so you'd, you'd have to work very hard not to understand what was required of you in this level. It's hopefully a nice way of introducing that, and, and also kind of getting us started for the, the kind of the ten levels where everything goes a little bit wrong.
Idea, and I do it quite a few times in the next few levels of environments that are more mechanical so they kind of they shift shape uh, you press buttons in order to tweak the world around you it's something I love in, in quite a few games and and it felt like a nice way of keeping things interesting without you know having to introduce new characters as, as I said before and also here specifically I wanted to split the characters because there's quite a few characters at this point <laughs> and and Thomas Thomas is kind of at its perf perfect kind of balance I, I think around three characters four characters uh, so these kind of places where there's there's way more than that uh, it, it felt like they needed to be split into two groups just to hopefully to keep the game a bit a bit more fun and and those relationships a bit more understandable by the player so that's what this level is is basically splitting those out and hopefully the effect that you have in one area with one group of characters affects the other and vice versa a few times, which is which is hopefully fun. <laughs> was in love and that was fantastic and everything but that didn't mean they could let the doom cloud keep following them thomas was going to put his foot down once they got to the next level
like the idea, and I do it quite a few times in the next few levels, of environments that are more mechanical. So they kind of they shift shape, uh, you press buttons in order to tweak the world around you. It's something I love in, in quite a few games. And, and it felt like a nice way of keeping things interesting without you know, having to introduce new characters, as, as I said before. And also here specifically, I wanted to split the characters because there's quite a few characters at this point. <laughs> and and Thomas, Thomas is kind of at its perf perfect kind of balance. I, I think around three characters, four characters. Uh, so these kind of places where there's, there's way more than that, uh, it, it felt like they needed to be split into two groups just to hopefully to keep the game a bit, a bit more fun and, and those relationships a bit more understandable by the player. So that's what this level is, is basically splitting those out and hopefully the effect that you have in one area with one group of characters affects the other and vice versa a few times, which is, which is hopefully fun. Chris was in love, and that was fantastic and everything, but that didn't mean they could let the doom cloud keep following them. Thomas was going to put his foot down once they got to the next level. So Thomas is gone. Um, hopefully that kind of surprised Chris. players um, because he's obviously the main character. So, so so making him the first character to be removed kind of throws people off a little bit and kind of makes people wonder what's what's going on, which is cool. I also had to front load in these levels um, anything I wanted to do with lots and lots of multiple characters because they're all getting picked off. Spoilers. Um, they uh, I needed to make sure that anything I wanted to do that had lots and lots of different characters interacting was done right at the start. So this is an example of a level like that where multiple characters are working together in different formations, this wouldn't work later on in the game, so it's a, it's a nice chance to, to play with some of those ideas.
thematically, um, Chris had to be taken um, by the Pixel Cloud on his own. He's he's going to grow and learn and be a lovely human being eventually. But for now, I kind of felt like it was important that he that he that he was he was still not quite there. He wasn't quite with the others, and he kind of was distant. And I kind of wanted that to to be kind of symbolised, I guess. Symbolised, symbolised by the way he by the way he goes in the end. Um, and that's. That's cool. And then, obviously, around that came this awesome idea. Right, awesome idea. I'm doing a lot of very arrogant statements during this this particular piece of commentary. The rest of it's all very humble. Um, as, as he, the, the, the idea of him kind of falling through that environment is hopefully quite fun. Uh, that's what's cool about Thomas, because because the world's so abstracted, I'm kind of free to, to just do silly stuff that doesn't make a lot of sense. Why would he fall? Who would make a room this shape? Why doesn't he die horribly when he lands? All these. Uh, anyone who follows me on Twitter will know how obsessed I am with the Metal Gear Solid franchise. Um, and one thing I love, a little moment, tiny little moment, is in Metal Gear Solid 2 um, on the tanker. There's a moment where you come up to a corner and you see a guard's shadow and it tells you that a guard's around that corner. It's utterly pointless because you've got the radar, but it's a really cool dramatic moment. I remember when I played the, that game on PlayStation, it was so... Um, it was, it was just innovative. It felt really different and cool and awesome. And I liked the fact that a graphical effect, so the shadow, was actually relevant to the gameplay and actually kind of gave me some information. And I wanted to do that here. So again, shadows, um, with this level, the shadows kind of act as an early warning system, so you know that something's going to fall on you because there's a shadow being cast. There's no other point in the game where that relationship is quite so specific, but I love it here. I think it works really nicely, and I'm, I'm really chuffed with how it came out. Thank you. 